I'd like to invite you all to take a seat. And just a reminder, there's lots of seats up front, so don't be shy. Come on up. Well, good morning. I'm Joan Fulton, Chair of the Purdue Senate. And just so that we're all clear and there's no confusion, this is the State of the University Address. Twelve hours from now, the President of the United States will deliver the annual State of the Union Address. The fact that these happen on the same day is coincidence. This morning's event was scheduled some time ago. So I hope you listen to and enjoy both speeches. At this point, it's my real pleasure to introduce President Cordova. And just on a personal note, it's been a real pleasure to work with President Cordova as Chair of the Senate. And one of the things I would particularly note is when we're in meetings and dealing with very difficult and multifaceted issues, I can always depend on President Cordova to say, well, let's get the facts. Let's take a look at the documents. Let's read it. Let's get right down to all of the different components. So that's something we really appreciate. Thank you. We are in turbulent times, but we're also achieving record levels of success here at Purdue, student success, research success, of course, many wonderful awards to our university. That impact reaches beyond our state and our nation to global uh, challenges. So leading this progress is our president. Ladies and gentlemen, president of Purdue University, Dr. France Cordova. Thank you, Joan, for that introduction and for your outstanding leadership as chair of the University Senate. You and your colleagues perform a tremendous service for Purdue. My thanks go to all of our staff, faculty, and students, as well as our community, our legislators, our alumni, and our supporters everywhere. You've made this a great year for Purdue. This is the State of the University Address. I'd like to celebrate our achievements of the past year and address our challenges and plans going forward. My address will pertain mainly to the West Lafayette campus, as the chancellors of our regional campuses will be giving their own presentations in April. This is a road map of my talk today. We've begun the biennial budget appropriations process, in which we meet with legislators, the Commission for Higher Education, and state officials to explain Purdue's budget needs. I want to bring you up to date on where we are in that process. I'll talk today about progress on the individual elements of our strategic plan and achievements that qualify as truly new synergies. These are the achievements of our faculty, our staff, and our students. And finally, I'll talk about our future, laying out our plans for investments in education and research, as well as framing our long-term challenges to maintain our status as a public Research University of Distinction. Let's begin by looking at some great Purdue moments from the past year. Turn your attention to the screens, please. I never set the winning the Nobel Prize my, my goal. Keep exploring in the right direction such that your accomplishment will be recognized. I hope that all young people will hold high lofty dreams and uh, pursue these dreams. This is NBC Nightly News. The government says 5,000 barrels a day. But looking at the video released this week, Purdue University engineer Steve Worley estimates it's closer to 70,000 barrels a day. What we can see are uh, clouds, and so those features are traveling at the speed of the oil. Uh, and so by measuring the speed of those features, I'm able to measure the speed of the oil. 
having the honor to lead the parade is Purdue University's All-American Marching Band. They boast having the biggest bass drum in the world. The chance to dance on Dancing with the Stars has been a huge opportunity for us. I don't know if a lot of people know that we even have a ballroom team. Um, hopefully after this they will. We're still after it to win, you know. We have goals set and I think we have a good shot. Isn't there a dirtier blend of science? I guess it's science and gross. Eee, rat, that's bad. Oh, that pig's dead. How long? A while. Paul Arito for Purdue. And okay. she curls one in there. Well, if you learn one song by the end of this camp, it's going to be Hail Purdue. recipient of the Neil Armstrong Medal of Excellence, Captain Sully Sullenberger, is a fellow member of the Pilots Who Land in Strange Places Club, <laughs> and most importantly, the kind of person which Boilermakers hold in the very highest esteem. Boilermakers came in here, stole set number one, and then dominated sets two and three on their way to the victory. They're in the regional final for the first time in school history. The goal of the basic utility vehicle and what it's designed to be is affordable transportation for developing countries. But the goal is to have a vehicle that can be locally built, maintained, affordable. It's meant to be a day in and day out work vehicle and it can haul people or produce or water, whatever the needs are in that particular area. Purdue is very good at impacting the state, impacting the nation and increasing now impacting the world. And I think it's so good for our students to actually have an impact in the world and make the world a better place. It's been a great year for Purdue. In this slide, we see photos of the beautiful Nobel Prize ceremony in Stockholm, Sweden, where Dr. Eichi Nagishi was honored as the co-recipient of the 2010 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. It was a week he and Purdue will never forget. And this is a moment to thank the Journal and Courier newspaper for sending a reporter to memorialize the incredible week of events surrounding the awards ceremony. Nagishi was an eloquent spokesperson for science, for Purdue, and with his message of hope and inspiration for all the world. It was a powerful moment when Neil Armstrong returned to campus last fall to present Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger, the hero who landed his plane safely on the Hudson River, with the Neil Armstrong Medal of Excellence. They are Boilermaker role models who will forever be associated with great moments in history, and both of them credit Purdue for much of their success. Over the Thanksgiving holiday, 50 million viewers saw the Purdue All-American Marching Band during the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Purdue is the first marching band in the Big Ten to receive an invitation to perform, and they made us proud. So thank you to Jay Gebhardt, his talented staff, and our students, twirlers, gold dusters, golden sink, silks, band members, all. The Discovery Channel's Dirty Jobs was on campus to film a segment with Purdue's forensic entomology team in the College of Agriculture. Our team took the host, Mike Rowe, through crime scene scenarios using dead pigs. I watched the whole show, and quite honestly, it made me sick. That aside, the show did an excellent job in demonstrating Purdue's strength in agricultural and forensic sciences. These are just a few of the widely publicized achievements of our talented students, faculty, and staff in 2010, and I'll talk more about their successes later. First, I'd like to address an issue that's on everyone's mind, the economy and our budget challenges. 
As you know, we're in the midst of a biennial budget-setting process with the Indiana Legislature. This is nothing new. We do it every two years. As usual, we have presented our budget request to the Commission for Higher Education, and I've testified before the State Budget Committee and the House Ways and Means Committee. You can see those presentations on our budget link website, which can be accessed from the Purdue homepage. In my testimony, I laid out the work we've already done to identify cost savings and efficiencies and new revenue sources. We understand the economic challenges facing the state, and because of that, we've planned, assessed, and looked ahead to take our fiscal fate into our own hands. It's thanks to the work of everyone at Purdue that we've already identified more than $60 million in savings through spending controls and efficiencies. But there's more work to do. Since we submitted our budget, the Commission and the Governor have made budget recommendations that, combined, leave Purdue West Lafayette with an appropriation level below our 2003-04 levels, and nearly 12 percent lower than 2008-09, which was on the eve of our last biennium budget request. We continue to talk with our legislators about the commitments we've made to our students and the contributions that Purdue makes to the state, the nation, and the world. We emphasize that to maintain and increase our value and our reputation, we draw from a national pool of faculty and staff. Thus, we must provide salaries and benefits that are competitive nationally. The result is that we have talent that has started new companies and contributed mightily toward the economic development of the state. It's talent that has won Nobel and other prizes and drawn much research investment to our state. We cannot compromise on quality, on the value of a Purdue degree, on the economic impact of Purdue on our state. I hope you'll follow our efforts by regularly checking the Budget Link website and by attending our February 22nd President's Forum, at which Treasurer Al Diaz will give us a detailed look at the university's budget and our work in meeting the fiscal challenges that face our state and our university. Now, let's move on to some of our good news, areas where we've made great progress over the past year. I think you'll all recognize this slide by now. It's our new Synergy Strategic Plan, which has focused on three key strategies, launching tomorrow's leaders, discovery with delivery, and meeting global challenges, and the synergies among them. The plan's goals are infused with the commitment to diversity, sustainability, good resource management, and enhancing the quality of life and educational opportunities for our Purdue citizens and local and state communities. These goals are not new. Our university has always focused on learning, research, and engagement, but they're newly described and tuned for a new age. I want to highlight our progress in these three areas and then describe some of the new synergies that emerged in 2010. First, let me put the focus on the future leaders of our schools, our cultural and nonprofit institutions, our corporations, and our communities, our students. We know that student success comes from being involved with world-class faculty in hands-on research, service learning at home, research and cultural experiences abroad, community engagement, and a rich out-of-classroom experience that fosters inclusiveness. We also know that our students will perform better if they come to us better prepared for the rigors of a Purdue education. At the October President's Forum, Vice Provost Dale Whitaker gave a detailed summary of the university's goals, achievements, and plans for student success. I'll mention only a couple of highlights here. I call this slide our boiler up slide. Our 2010 freshmen came to us with the highest average SAT and ACT scores in our history. Their high school class ranking and GPA are also better than ever before. 
We've brought high achieving students here through our, our campus doors. Our job now is to keep them here and to help them succeed. That's retention, and our record is improving. Returning students showed a record first year retention rate of 89% in 2010. Last year, it was 87%. So two percentage points in one year is terrific, and we'd like it to be a trend. Much of the success goes to first year programs targeted at improving retention. Congratulations to Dan Carpenter and his staff who are responsible for the student access, transition and success programs, including Boiler Gold Rush. To the advisors and instructors of our learning communities. To Dean Leah Jamison and the successful Ideas to Innovation Engineering First Year Program that emphasizes both hands-on and team learning. And to Jerry McCartney and the very talented IT people who have made signals and hot seat such creative and useful tools that make the classroom a more interactive environment. Featured in the New York Times this last weekend was research by Purdue's Jeffrey Carpicky, assistant professor in psychological sciences, who studies learning and memory among students. I know there are many more efforts throughout the academy that are focused on student learning, and I thank all of our colleagues and the faculty for stepping up their efforts here. I'll talk more later about learning research at Purdue and an ambitious facility plan to invest more in student success. But now I'll move to the second goal in the strategic plan, discovery with delivery. Faculty and research staff have made tremendous strides in research and entrepreneurship this past year. We reached a record $440 million in sponsored programs and research awards in fiscal year 2010. That's a 30% increase over the previous year. The nearly $100 million increase is the largest one-year dollar increase in the history of Purdue. At the September President's Forum, Vice President for Research Richard Bacchaeus focused on numerous examples of research as seen through the lenses of our faculty performing the research. I've accompanied Richard in a number of venues around the state where he has lucidly illustrated Purdue's success in discovery with delivery. Here I have time to highlight just a few research programs, such as the Purdue Center for Cancer Research, established in 1976 with a two-year planning grant. It received its sixth competitive five-year renewal from the National Cancer Institute. Ours is, only, is one of only seven non-clinical National Cancer Institute centers and is interdisciplinary in its mission to promote and support cancer research at Purdue. In fact, Faculty from the School of Veterinary Medicine and the Colleges of Pharmacy, Science, Health and Human Sciences, and Engineering are all involved in cancer research. Thank you to Director Tim Ratliff for your leadership. We appreciate all that you and the staff and faculty have done to make this center so successful. Funding was renewed for the Military Family Research Institute in 2010. The Lilly Endowment's generosity enables Purdue to work with communities, schools, organizations, and the military so these families receive the assistance they need. Congratulations to Shelley McDermott Wadsworth, who is here with us today, and her team. This work is gaining national attention. Stacy Hitt, Director of Operation Diploma for the Military Families Research Institute, was invited to discuss the program with Jill Biden, wife of Vice President Joe Biden, who is chairing a White House summit. In October, Shelley was invited to a signing in the East Room of the White House of a bill to boost provisions for military families. Just yesterday, she was back at the White House to be present when the President, First Lady, and Mrs. Biden announced the results of a presidential study directive on military families. Congratulations to Michael Bergman and Patrick Kane, 
both from the College of Liberal Arts, who will lead a project to critically assess arguments for skepticism about moral and religious beliefs. This Templeton Foundation grant asks the big questions for the purpose of gaining new insights from open-minded inquiry. Now I'd like to turn to the third major goal of the strategic plan meeting global challenges. One could call this educating today's students for tomorrow's world. Purdue continues to have the second largest international student population among public research universities. This helps all of our students better understand other cultures and recognize the values of differing points of view. We also have more than 300 study abroad programs in 50 countries, offering our students a global experience that cannot be replicated in the classroom. Our faculty are conducting research with students on every continent. And yes, that includes Antarctica, where Professor Mark Caffey, Purdue Prime Lab Director, is using ice layers taken from the West Antarctic ice sheet to look for past solar variations. He's hoping to correlate these with climate fluctuations. Climate change is one of the grand challenges we're tackling at Purdue. Faculty members are doing research to increase knowledge that contributes to understanding many of our global challenges better. Professor Eric Kelly is one of our shining examples of how research experience can help in an international crisis situation. Based on Eric's accurate predictions and work with the Haiti earthquake, he was named science advisor for the United Nations Disaster Risk Reduction Task Force. Professor Calais was also part of the PBS series called Nova Science Now. The particular show that he's featured on is called Detecting Earthquakes. I'm sure you're familiar with the work of our Gabisa Ejeta, the work he has done in sub-Saharan Africa on sorghum, sorghum research, which earned him the 2009 World Food Prize. Professor Ejeta, in partnership with the College of Agriculture and the Global Policy Research Institute, recently hosted a national workshop at Purdue. The participants included members of government and national organizations, other universities, and the private sector. Their goal was to initiate a partnership to address food security around the world. I'd like to speak now to new synergies that combine these three goals for learning, discovery, and global engagement. One example is the new College of Health and Human Sciences, which officially opened last summer under the leadership of Dean Christine Laddich. The new college brought together nine existing academic units from three colleges, liberal arts, pharmacy, nursing, and health sciences, and consumer and family sciences. This realignment took great faculty leadership and will enhance collaboration, innovation, and recruitment of students and faculty in a most important area. Another new synergy that created last year was the Global Policy Research Institute, which was formulated with participation from many faculty members from colleges and units across campus. I mentioned this already in the context of Dr. Ajeta's goals for global food security. The Global Policy Research Institute links science and society. The institute is led by Dr. Arden B. Met previously director of the National Science Foundation and the National Institute of Standards and Technology. The Institute has both research and learning objectives. A learning element of GPRI is an undergraduate seminar on global policy issues. The class comprises students from engineering, business, liberal arts, and technology, all pooling their individual educational experiences in a common goal to understand the importance of policy in addressing global challenges. Gabriella Weaver is leading a synergy in the new hall for discovery and learning research. The center she is directing is focused on the science of learning, 
the design of innovative educational programs, and the development of interactive learning technologies. The center oversees more than 30 projects involving 180 faculty members from every Purdue college and school. This research could dramatically change the pedagogy in higher education. Purdue's new West Coast Partnership Center, led by director and Purdue alumnus John Boyle, will link Purdue's experience in ed engineering, technology, and science with the West Coast high-tech companies and entrepreneurs. This new synergy will help increase investment in the innovations of our faculty, enhance the recruitment of students and faculty from the West Coast, and engage a larger number of alumni in the area. The center is supported in part by investment from the state's Economic Development Corporation, and we thank the Secretary of Commerce for that investment. I've talked a lot about the collective achievements in learning, research, and engagements this past year. I'd like to also mention the recognition that individuals have won as a result of their pursuit of excellence. I already mentioned the terrific honor of the Nobel Prize for Chemistry faculty member, Eiichi Nagishi. Connie Weaver from our new College of Health and Human Sciences has been elected to the Institute of Medicine, which is the health arm of the National Research Council. Dr. Weaver will in will advise the Institute of Medicine on issues related to nutrition and disease. We recently recruited to our faculty National Academy of Science member Zhang Kang Su to our College of Agriculture, where he will continue his groundbreaking research on epigenetics and plant cell biology. Joe Francisco, Graham Cooks, and Freydun Shahidi were inducted into the 2010 class of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, one of the nation's oldest and most prestigious societies. We had three Fulbright scholars named in 2010. David Eichinger from the College of Education is at Uganda Christian University, where he is co-teaching biology courses and conducting research and workshops for primary and secondary school teachers. Charles Ingreo from the Department of History in the College of Liberal Arts is in Nicosia, Cyprus, where he's lecturing to different ethnic groups in a town that is divided in half because of the conflicts between the Greek, Cypriot, and Turkish Cypriot communities. Michael Witt from the Purdue University Libraries is lecturing and conducting research at the Bibliotheca Alexandria in Egypt. His role focuses on, uh, new, on research for librarians in curating non-traditional digital information. Faculty in the Colleges of Engineering, Science, and Technology have earned two Early Career Research Awards from the Department of Energy, one Five-Year Career Development Award from the National Science Foundation, and nine Career Research Awards also from the National Science Foundation. So our congratulations go to all of these new faculty researchers. Just as our faculty members are being recognized, so is the institution as a whole, and departments and programs within it. For example, Purdue was the only Big Ten university to go up in the US News and World Report's rankings in 2010, following its upward trend from the previous year. In this past year, we moved from 22nd to 18th place overall for national public research universities. We were also recognized in five out of eight student success categories, identified among the best colleges for return on investment for our students by Bloomberg Businessweek, and ranked fourth in the Wall Street Journal survey of corporate recruiters, illustrating that employers believe our students are well prepared when they graduate. Purdue has departments ranked in the top 10 in nearly every college and school on campus. 
from our number one biological and agricultural engineering graduate program to our highly rated speech language pathology program, interior design program, and analytical chemistry program. These acknowledgments are a testament to the quality of our academy, and they show too that the emphasis on student success is paying off. Diversity is an integral part of achieving excellence, and it's an integral part of our strategic plan. This past year, Purdue created a centralized Office of Diversity and Inclusion and recruited Christine Taylor as the inaugural Vice Provost for Diversity and Inclusion and Chief Diversity Officer. This spring, Dr. Taylor's staff is launching an equity scorecard and a new climate survey to help us further assess where we stand in the areas of diversity. In this context, I'd like to recognize the successful efforts of some of our cultural groups. Purdue's chapter of the American Indian Science and Engineering Society was the recipient of the Professional and Chapter Development Award at a national conference in Albuquerque in November. Congratulations to Director Falika Ahastine Bryant. With the leadership of Director Renee Thomas, Purdue's Black Cultural Center and the Black Alumni Organization encouraged youth to go to college and make positive life choices through their support of the 40th Indiana Black Expo in Indianapolis. To continue to invest in the important goals I've been describing, we have to continue to seek new sources of funding. Last year, we reached some milestones for development, as illustrated in this slide. Now our challenge is to build on the momentum and set the bar higher. Lisa Calvert, our new Vice President for Development, will help lead this charge. We're preparing for a significant campaign that will help us continue to provide cutting-edge facilities, endowed professorships, scholarships, and more. The Mackey Arena renovation has been part of our fundraising work. Drive down Northwestern and you'll see the dramatic progress that's being made. Athletics Director Morgan Burke tells me we're on target to complete the project for its grand opening on 11-11-11. And when it's open, we'll continue to cheer for our student athletes who make us proud, just as we did last Saturday when Purdue hosted the ESPN College Game Day before the nation. We come now to the last portion of my address, that is, looking ahead. I want to share with you selected ambitious projects that we're working on to ensure that we continue the innovative research, quality education, and global impact that Purdue is known for. Addressing interdisciplinary research, education, and impact will be a unique science park called the Life and Health Sciences Quadrangle. Its location is adjacent to Discovery Park, which is intimately connected with the work going on there. The Quadrangle will benefit from a number of things. First, our world-class faculty and interdisciplinary research methods. Then, Purdue's historical strengths in engineering, agriculture, structural biology, analytical chemistry, veterinary medicine, nursing, the health sciences and pharmacy, and our history of fostering entrepreneurship. It will benefit from our expertise in guiding discoveries from the laboratory to the marketplace. This is a 10-year plan that we've just barely begun. It's anchored by two major new facilities coming online now, a drug discovery building and a health and human sciences facility. Last fall, Purdue's Board of Trustees approved financing and construction of the $25 million drug discovery building that will be located adjacent to the Hansen Life Sciences Research Building. It will bring our drug discovery researchers in the colleges of science, 
Health and Human Sciences, Agriculture, Pharmacy, and the School of Veterinary Medicine into a common space that promotes and enables cutting edge work. And then the Health and Human Sciences facility will combine our Speech, Language, and Hearing Sciences department, medical education program, and clinical facilities. The goal of this new facility is to enhance interdisciplinary partnerships in nursing, medical education, foods and nutrition, health and kinesiology, psychology, and speech, language, and hearing sciences. These partnerships will connect students to their eventual careers and help Indiana residents with services in our clinics. They'll provide valuable education and training for our students. Other planned facilities in the Life and Health Sciences Quadrangle will include, in addition to the Binley Biosciences Center, an Ag and Life Sciences Building, and a Research Animal Facility. As you can see, we're investing in infrastructure in an interdisciplinary field that would bring together our talented scientists, engineers, and social scientists in areas of research and education important to our state's future in the biosciences. The Life and Health Sciences Quadrangle will help retain and attract leading faculty and also research grants that will further position Purdue to be a national leader in this rapidly evolving and important interdisciplinary field. Our student leaders have a long-term vision for student success, and we're investing in their plans. We call this vision the Student Success Corridor, and it's principally along 3rd Street. As you know, at the west end of 3rd Street, the Recreation Center is getting, getting a major makeover as a wellness and fitness center. This is a project that was led by our students during all phases. A second project that is also student-led is the Center for Student Excellence and Leadership. The vision for this facility is a collaborative hub, a one-stop shop supporting student success. It will house peer advising, tutoring, and space for student organizations and student interactions. It's currently in the planning phase. A third project is the newly approved and donor-funded Bailey Hall for the Purdue Music Organizations. In addition, several colleges have joined in a proposal for a student projects facility. This would give students hands-on design and build opportunities while nurturing team, organizational, and managerial skill development. In the longer view, there are plans for a combined building that would house an expanded library in classrooms. I've spoken about investment in facilities. We'll also continue to invest in the infrastructure for research and its commercialization, with staffing, pre- and post-award support, and core facility investment. We'll continue to revolutionize the development of cyber infrastructure for scientific collaboration, connecting researchers from around the world with vast amounts of computing power, helping them solve problems and share new knowledge. We will invest in our scholars, realizing that profoundly new thinking and creativity requires recognition and a nurturing, interactive environment. We will continue to invest in new approaches to teaching and learning, especially in our introductory classes and our large classroom environments. We will emphasize learning that is combined with research and assessment so that we can determine what works for success and invest in it. I reiterate my support for innovative experiments and teaching practice and my support for rewarding faculty who demonstrate both excellent teaching and excellent research. I thank the faculty and support staff for focusing on the retention and graduation of our students and for redoubling their efforts to realize in full the dual mission of teaching and research in a great university. 
Hail Purdue! These words elicit pride in our institution. As I have shown, we have a lot to be proud about. We have challenges from all our stakeholders in a changing climate for public investment in education. Last November 30th at this forum, we hosted a panel discussing the future of public research universities. Certainly, the funding model is under stress. Yet the value of a Purdue education, as our student body president, Brad Kreitz, eloquently pointed out at the forum, is there. We have a shared responsibility to preserve and enhance that value. How we embrace and address the challenges before us will be how we define Purdue for the future. We will thrive based on the choices that we make. Choices about cost cutting and cost containment. Choices about investments in research and education. Choices about which local and global engagements enhance our mission. Our real challenge is to take the future into our own hands and find workable, sustainable, and empowering solutions. That's what we do at Purdue. We're thought leaders. We're decision makers. We currently have groups of faculty, staff, and students working some important issues, near-term issues, such as the budget, such as our medical insurance plan. I'm announcing today the formation of a group of thought leaders among the faculty, staff, and students under the leadership of Provost Sands to put together plans to address the funding model for Purdue over the long term. Their ideas will be the subject of future forums. I hope that by next fall we'll have plans before us that could be truly transformative. As we meet our near-term and long-term challenges, we can rely on these strengths in our academy. A desire to tackle great challenges in order to make a better world. A capacity to think with freedom and to act with creativity to see what others have not seen before and, in the words of Neil Armstrong, to land in strange places and the passion to share our wisdom and our leadership with the future leaders of our country, our students.